<laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your boy Jay Stu. I'm back after a long hiatus with another episode of Cigars, Cocktails, and Conversation. I got two guests here with me. One that you guys probably, he might as well be my co host, and another new guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Mark. Um, my Twitter handle and um, Instagram is JY underscore YOU underscore ICE. Oh, you Mark now. I am. All right. Uh, my name is Alex Bomer. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at King Lexington underscore. And it's me, Jay Stu, your host. So uh, we got three really good topics today. Uh, before that, we had Rocky Patel cigars and Cabossier. Uh, shout out to Pharrell, Pass Cabossier, Buster Rhymes, all of that. But uh, question number one is going to be, what is the best Christmas album ever? Ever. Yeah. Ever. Not not this year, not last year, ever. Oh. <laughs> it's got to be Gucci Mane's album from 2016. I Burr. Take, I take that right now. Best Christmas album ever. Because oh, you got to think. If the people back then were able to stream stuff. Well, I'm starting off with this. Justin Bieber, Under the Mistletoe. The reason I say that is because this album has been in rotation for me for seven straight winners, bro. I bought that album from Target in 2011, and it's timeless. Justin Bieber, for one, already has hits. Right. Number two, the content, the songs, and the vocals, unmatched. And he and he went and got Mariah Carey "I Want for Christmas for You." What, what, how you say, what's the song? "I Want for Christmas is You." Uh huh. He got her on the remix on the album. Yeah. It kills it. Yeah. But 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 I will say if we're talking about Christmas albums, we have to like Justin Bieber. You don't even though his his the album as a whole might be a great album. You don't. He doesn't have that one song. That people are like, oh no, turn on Justin Bieber's version. He doesn't have that. Nobody wants to hear that. Bro, he song. was he was on every commercial that that in 2011. I hear you, but I'm this just, this is what 20 20 winners later, <laughs> and, Mar- <laughs> and Mariah Carey's. Um, I want Chris. Yeah, it's, it's timeless. timeless. It's, it's timeless. classic. That's what I mean. Like he doesn't have that one song on that album that you could say is. You know, it's a timeless song, and people are going to, when they hear that song, they're going to think that he made that song. That's his song. But he does have original content. Then the man want to grab Boys the Men. I hear you. Man, bro, he snapped. What's your favorite? I have to say it's Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra? That's real. Uh-huh. Frank is definitely top five. So I'm not What's yours? I don't know. It's too many. I love Christmas. It's too many. Like, I don't know about Before that. we start rolling, didn't one of y'all say Ariana Grande? I love yes. Ariana <laughs> well, I'm sorry. So you gonna flex your camera. I swear. <laughs> when I kinda I told y'all what the topics were gonna be, you said Ariana Grande. She cool. She I great. And she time. has a great Christmas album. But I haven't heard it, I gotta check that but, out. But as I was saying, when you when you when you speak of the greatest ever, right. I she, still can't put that I can't put her in that category yet. Well shit, be even one of the coldest R and B people ever. Now you just we, we need a few more decades. Now you just talking. Just Bieber ain't Bieber. dropped nothing relevant. Not a long time. Not because his last album I didn't like it. Respasado, all of that. Trash yeah. terror. But the one before that? It was good. But journals and what was the other one? was the best thing he ever put. Yeah, hey, journals, journals, he went dumb. Journals was a hit. Hey, journals was a hit. Hey, I'm a believer. But you talking about best RB ever? Nah. I'm not saying he the best R&B ever, but he he top he top ten top ten Jacquees is ten. You wildin', bro? Did y'all see the meme? Uh, it was him singing in the car, and it said, "When your car won't start up, <laughs> yeah, it's like e." He's horrible. Man, hey, I'm not a fan of dude. Yeah, he's 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 bad. He's a bad singer. He sounds what? like he breathes through his he sings through his nose or something. I know. I literally know seven people. Personally, that can sing ten times better than him. He's not bad. He's terrible. no, he's bad. He's though. terrible. He's he's terrible. Ter- he needs a little bit more polish. He needs he a lot more. No, he can get his engineer to you know clean up the. One of our part. best friends sings ten times better than him. Nemo. Shout out to Nemo. 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 Shout out to Felix. You need to be all of y'all. Shout out to hey. the Valley. Super side note: Candace Price has a song with Key Sweat, a new song. Wait, when? When 
Miss Trump. I don't Trump. know. I saw it on her Instagram though. Okay. Yeah, she back. Okay. That might, be a, bad. that might be a hit. Speaking of R and B, she she got hits. Mm-hmm. Candace had hits. I, I'm anticipating them. One of the best one of the best vocalists out there. Female vocalists. Definitely. Hands down. Definitely under the radar. Alright. Mm. We good on Christmas albums since both of y'all are kinda punked out. I'm not punking out. I'm not saying Ariana Grande is the greatest album, but what I'm saying is Bieber's album doesn't have Maybe I should have rephrased the question and said, What is your favorite Christmas my, album? My favorite Christmas album? Well, I don't have to look up Chance the Rapper. No. I forgot about that. <laughs> that shit was decent. And I'm not a big Chance the Rapper fan. No. I love it. it. I love it. Oh, Merry Christmas, little mama. Hey, Merry Christmas, little mama. That's a hit, no, Joe. Ever, what? Ever. No, it's my, no, it's my favorite. It's it's fun. It's new. It's something you don't always hear. It's a it's a Chicago spin on Christmas albums. I mean, you know I'm all about Chicago shit. That's so, real. That's real. Shout out to Chance for that. So that's my favorite Christmas album. If we go on Christmas album, that's my favorite Christmas album. That's fair. Did Kirk Franklin drop a Christmas album? I'm pretty sure he did. Gee, what are you on your window? Hey, whatever Kirk Franklin drop is my favorite. <laughs> whatever he put out, I'm gonna be listening to it. Actually, the whole Friday After Next soundtrack. Actually, All the Christmas songs was fine. True, but a Chicago spin on a Christmas album, you can't go wrong. I mean, Chicago is the man. You a little juke juke, a yeah. little eggnog, a like, mistletoe. Come on now. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it all. Get a juke jam with the mistletoe, eggnog, and kvassia. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. That yeah. sound like babies. You sound like you're going to have a baby by the summer. Hey, it <laughs> take nine months. I'll have me a September baby. <laughs> all right, we're going to roll to the next topic. This one is going to be pretty interesting. Should athletes get endorsement deals before stepping on the field or court professionally? I'm going to let y'all start off. I'm going to start this one. What J. Cole say? I love to see a black man get paid. Mm-hmm. That's real. I love it. But are we putting too much stock into it? That's the that's the thing. I feel like a lot of times you see these guys who obviously they, they are great high school players, great college players, and probably, you know, top 10, top 10 athletes are typically the ones who are, we see getting these type of deals. Right. But as we often see, which is the case, these same top 10 athletes, they don't always pan out professionally. Injuries. That's because there's no exact science. Though, yeah, really. and obviously there's no, there's no translation as to, okay, when you get this many buckets in college, you're gonna get this many buckets in, in, the, pro, in the pros. Um, so obviously that's the case, but I feel like a lot of times we have we put a lot of stock into these athletes coming straight out of college, unproven, not really unproven because they've proven that they can play on a collegiate level, but a collegiate level and a, a professional level are two different spectrums as we all have seen in the past. So I just feel like the biggest thing is that how do we, if we can, put a cap on how much money is too much money for these athletes. I don't think that's because these same brands that's giving them the money are making money off of them. So yeah. you can't cap it. LeBron signed a $90 million deal True. and then went back to high school the next day. What? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you know, I mean, you don't know. It's no, because LeBron could have very well been a bust and Nike invested that bread. Good for him because his family don't eat up. Right, exactly. And then a lot of things. Another point that I feel like people don't think about when we talk about this is some of those brands have these kids years before they know they're going to sign them through the mm-hmm. AAU circuit. Right. Like, uh, for instance, like LeBron played for Adidas teams for his whole career, so everybody just assumed he was going to go with Adidas. Mm-hmm. But he ended up signing with Nike. But I, I don't think there should be any kind of cap. I think that. Those kids, they I mean, they earn that money. Yeah, they definitely they earn it at the same time. Because of the hours and the time and the, the amount. From of the, the company sacrifice. standpoint, though, you have to be the first person to pay them. And then you want to pay them good because if not, they're going to go with your competitor. Mm-hmm. So if, I, if I'm a big brand, I'm going to try to lock you in, especially if you project the top five picks. Because, I mean, depending on what team you land on, like, for instance, uh, Vince Carter, his first deal was with Puma. Mm-hmm. Puma didn't, no big brand really wants to sign him because they like Toronto's not a big enough market. So it also has something to do with the market. Mm-hmm. So, I think. Okay, so back to your point where you say top five picks. Okay, so every year, there's obviously top five, there's five picks that's gonna be within top five pick. How do you distinguish between which year I'm gonna sign all five of these guys or is it 
sometimes there's not there's not a guy within this top five pick who's going to be worth a shoe contract. And actually, the crazy thing is this past draft class was like that mm -hmm. because with three of the top eight signed with Puma, mm -hmm. yeah. like usually Nike kills the game yeah. with with top tier athletes like that. Yeah. But this year was very different. Shout but, out to Puma shaking up the game. I, I like. I didn't I like, get those kicks yet. Those kicks are fire. I, I like the fact that it gives guys options. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. I hate the the idea that you have to be Nike, Nike or Adidas. That's it's it. like no. Like there's other you know there's other big brands out here who are obviously marketable and who obviously have the the cap for signing uh, big name athletes. So shout out to Puma. And Nike. then with the NBA loosening the uh, dress code restriction on sneakers, I think that's also going to play a big role. Mm -hmm. And you know athletes signing a certain brand. But J.R. Smith still got a great right. tattoo though. Yeah, I don't Ooh, understand that. <laughs> That's because the NBA not getting paid off the Supreme tattoo. I guess. And he did like Supreme didn't pay him to do that. That's like he mind. did that because he liked Supreme. But th that's the. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, if the NBA has a contract with Nike, then Nike makes a contract with Supreme to make the sleeves, and they all produce the same stuff. Why can't he wear it in game and get a tattoo? Of that you know, is that all not connected in some way? Because I know but the NBA not getting a cut off that off that Supreme. That's 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 advertisement for another company that's not paying the team of the NBA. Yeah. I think that's why that that's a factor. I mean, if Apple, a Fortune 500 company, can create a commercial and air it during Thanksgiving season and make so much money off of, why can't the NBA just go ahead and say, all right, let's get in business with Supreme? You know, they represent something good. Enough. But the Supreme want to? I mean, they did the collab, the NBA Nike collab, but I, I you got to think of. The NBA wanted to associate themselves with certain brands too, True. so they probably want to do just enough to get hype and whatever else, and let them do the collab. But do they really want to be tied to this brand for X amount of years or time? So it's it's a it's a, a real fine line. It's all about the money, exactly. But I'm happy, I'm happy for all these young guys cashing out on these companies because they gonna cash out on us anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Right. At the end of the day. At the end of the day, they they are going to get paid as well. Yep. And more. And and a good a great example of this is uh putting stock in a player that you don't know how you're gonna pan out is Sebastian Taylor. Y'all know that's one of my favorite players. Mm -hmm. Bassie signed like a twelve million dollar deal out of high school with Adidas and we all know his career really didn't pan out mm -hmm. to what they wanted it to be, but it's because of the situation he went to. He went to a Portland team where if you really look at his stats from his rookie year, he balled. But he just was on Portland, and Portland was trash. That's when the Spurs and the Lakers were running the West. Yep. So he just went to a bad situation, and he got bounced around. And then the DDC eventually dropped him because he got in legal troubles. But the cool thing about those brands, yeah, you invest all this money, but in those contracts, like Jay Williams' motorcycle accident or Sebastian Taylor getting in trouble with the law, mm -hmm. they can very well sever ties with that person, and I have to pay them if they don't do what they're supposed to do off the court. Yep. So it's a it's a win win. And a, a lose-lose, too, because if you screw up off the court, you lose all this money that you're going to get, and you're a, a terrible basketball player. So at least, you know, behave off court and just go ahead and rob this money out because you know that NBA money ain't going to be there. Yeah, mm -hmm. get, get the money while it's there because it, it'll definitely run out. Definitely. But I, I think this kind of plays into a topic we talked about a couple shows ago that I think these brands should be paying these high school athletes too because the AAU circuit makes so much money too. Yeah, and they run these kids into the ground. Yep. And, and, that's, and, that's, and you you know, yeah, I mean, man. you got your ice on from Morgan Park. <laughs> uh, you you know very well about the importance of the AAU circuit and the ties with man. brands because Morgan Park is a Jordan school. Yes. And you and know, they, they, they get, always I mean, Jordan they, school either. They get shoes and everything else, but I guarantee you, if say Morgan Park superstar player goes to a school that's probably Nike or Jordan mm -hmm. is they funnel them into the league and that I think that's another reason why they, they give them so much money is because hey you've been loyal to us since you were you know 14 U 13 U AAU you've been rocking with the brand so now we're going to reward you because you made us money you know way back when and so, I know I don't want to get off track but that ties into another topic that I wish we could talk about but uh, I forget the, the rookie's name well he's a, about to be a rookie in the NFL what's the uh, Oklahoma's quarterback. 
you know how they dig it up tweets from when he was 14, 15. And it's just to me, I the Heisman like, winner, yeah, Kyler Murray. Wow, yeah, I like, didn't know, I didn't hear about that. They digging up old tweets, and to me, it's just like a lot of these brands are investing this money, and they want mm-hmm. these kids to be, you know, all great. But when you put that much time and effort into a, such a young, you know, innocent person, because they're still human at the end of the day, you know, you don't give a chance to grow up. You know, you have these, you know, twenty five and up type expectations. You know, and you're a superstar, fourteen years, years old, superstar. When you're fourteen years right. old. You want the microscope, right? Yeah. People that don't want to see you succeed are gonna dig into your past and try to figure stuff out and put it out for the media, make you look like a bad guy. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, yes, that's great that you invest all that money into your athletes and you give them the contracts and they, they blow up and they get all this money, but that gives them so much more opportunity to make bad decisions, and that's what. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, you know, especially if you know you're 14 years old and you're a superstar, you gotta you know anything you can do. I mean, social media, you can't delete tweets or Instagram posts. They can always find it. So you, I mean, if you know you're a superstar, you gotta carry yourself as such. And I just yeah. know some kids don't got that. Yeah, that that, that mentality that, that somebody to teach them that mentor. They just got raw talent. They may got the contract. And they got somebody whispering in their ear something to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And they still living in that environment. It's just, it's and even sensitive. still, even with a mentor, like, you, you have to think, like, you're still 13. You're still 14. Social media, man, is a beast. It I'm is. so glad social media wasn't out when we were younger because I, I know, mean, I know well, some it's, super... It's not as big as it is now. Like, you have kids that are like... Like Snapchat, dude. Snapchat would have got us in some trouble as kids, man. man. Like, it's, it's just things that, like, we did as children... As children, kids aren't allowed to be kids. No yeah, more. I mean, right. that's my point. Kids aren't allowed to be kids. They're not allowed to make mistakes. Nope. They're like, I get that some mistakes you don't make. You don't make certain mistakes. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, kids should have the ability to voice themselves and express themselves. Right. And if that means venting on social media and saying, you know what, I hate this. I hate this shit or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't make them a bad person. It just means that but, at that moment in time they were going through something. But something in their life made them feel. Take it outside of sports. Your future employer can see it. So yeah. all in all, saying negative stuff on social media. Look at Kevin Hart. He was he he lost out of millions of dollars because of. I mean, because of something that like we look at it like okay, he's a comedian. He made a you know a, a joke or right. a hate joke, and it's like for me. If he made a joke about black people, I'm going to laugh because it's funny. Right? Right. But obviously somebody didn't find it funny. And for him, like you said, it, it comes back and it cost him a lot of money. Hey, but he's still a million dollar man. And he said that he's already apologized for it. So he's like, he's not going down that road again. But yeah. just in general, we all should carry it. I just, my, my logic was different when I was a kid. I, would, I knew I was going to play college sports to some capacity and I knew I was going to get a scholarship. So since the beginning of the time, anything bad that I was gonna get in trouble for, I'm like, I'm not doing it because my dream is to play college sports. So if it's gonna affect me playing college sports, I'm not doing it. Because it was a lot of mischief that I was gonna get into as a kid, you know, doing dumb stuff, throwing rocks and eggs and stuff like that. And I didn't do because I'm like, you know what? If my mom find out or I get in trouble, I'm not gonna get to play college sports. So I, I was like on a straight and narrow because I was just paranoid. Yeah. So maybe more kids should be paranoid because <laughs> I mean, hey, they need to learn at least like this is what I have at stake. This will be fun. But everybody yeah. don't got that that yeah. mentality, that upbringing, and everything else. So I know I need to. Ash, that's my little cone right there. Yeah, that was a pretty decent topic though. So I'm trying to shout out to Puma, Nike, Adidas, Reebok. ASIC, uh, all y'all companies, feel free to send us free shoes, free gifts, whatever else. Complex Con Chicago is coming up, so yeah. Shout out to the shout out to the man. Reality. Shout out to the brand. Big stuff coming in 2019. Uh-oh. Actually, first quarter of 2019. I got a big announcement coming up. Uh oh. Can't I can't talk about it until it's official, signed, sealed, delivered, but. We got first dibs, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all ready to head to the next topic? Yes, sir. Cool. All right, for our last and final topic, <laughs> they talking about some weird stuff off camera. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the last topic is going to be, do you guys think gun laws should be stricken, loosened, or should they stay the same? What's we'll start with Alexis, huh? 
a lot of people, it's it's seen as taboo to have a gun. Like, oh, you you carry a gun? It's like, oh, yeah. I'm almost like when people ask me that, I'm like, oh, you not? You know what I mean? Like, all of us have concealed carry. Boy, both of these gentlemen are military guys, so they're well versed in, in handling weapons. And I come from a background of military men, so. I actually never owned a gun until I was like 22 years old because my parents, I wasn't allowed to play video games with guns, never had a Nerf gun or a water gun. I had a water gun, but it was like pink, purple, green. It had, it, it had a big <laughs> thing on it that says water gun, but super soap. I had the one with the backpack. Gun, but my parents yeah. instilled in me from day one, guns are bad. Yeah. Like, I, know, I think that, that's they, part of the They stress the importance that guns aren't our toys. They hurt people. Right, and if you have a gun, you know this is way before you know concealed carry was allowed. But they just let me know, like you know, guns are not not good, you know. And I think that's part and of. I still, I don't even feel comfortable. I mean, I, I, of course, I feel comfortable, but I don't like the fact that you know I have to have a concealed carry, mm -hmm. but I'm doing it to protect myself and my family. Right, because there are knuckleheads out here. But I just think that if more people carry legally. That it wouldn't be so so taboo. Like it should be as simple as, you know what I'm saying? Like people having a driver's license almost. Like I think that, that it's comparable. Like driver's license and and having a FOIA card and or concealed carry should be like almost but like, at the same time everybody shouldn't have. Because this everybody, everybody can't drive either. Man, that's, so, so, hey, that's, that's very valid. That's a really valid point. There are people who who they drive have a license right, who drive, should not. but they shouldn't. You're right. We all know that. And we also know people that have void and concealed carry that yeah, and they also shouldn't. Right? Yeah, they're just irresponsible, you know, they don't clean their weapons all the time, don't take care of it. It's like I said, being a responsible gun owner is it's a it's a dedication and it takes it takes someone who is responsible. But at the same time, like I feel like it shouldn't be taboo. It shouldn't be something that we aren't comfortable with, like, oh yeah, you know, I it should be everyday conversation thing. Because it's not something that is going anywhere. But go back back to your point where you say your parents, like, my parents did the same thing to me. Like, I couldn't touch a gun. I couldn't have any cap guns. I couldn't even play Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, no, no I didn't get it. I didn't get that until, like, eighth, <laughs> seventh grade. But I was such a mature kid. They're like, you know what? We're going to let you get this game. But we're still, like, I had, they had a long sit-down talk. Yeah. I mean, I'm 12 years old, almost 13. They, like... I said, one is not real. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so, you know, this, I mean, you can get a lot of trouble for it. People go to jail for life. Mm -hmm. But I think that, that, that comes that. back to the, like I said, the culture. The culture is that a young black man having something that resembles a gun in this country is just don't put yourself in that position. Mm -hmm. I've always been taught that. One good thing, though, that I do like is when police run your plates, you're it shows that it shows that you're a concealed carry holder. So that makes me feel a lot more comfortable, you know, traveling because we all know that that's a really big issue, mm -hmm. specifically in the African American communities. Unarmed black men getting yep. gunned down. So I know, you know, my family and I'm pretty sure y'all families being young black men, you know, that that's a concern. But yep. I I do like that's a good law. I don't know. I like it. I, like you I, said, I it, it gives it gives the officer the opportunity to to know what they're getting into, and on the same flip on the flip side, you you feel more comfortable that they already are. No, right? They know. know, right? It's like well, okay, we, we they should know. They of should, of course, you know. But that's all another topic. But like you said, it goes back to that uniformity standard because uh, not to put his business out there, but my supply sergeant you know, on the military side. Has his concealed carry, he has his weapon on him, he travels as a supply sergeant, you know, from state to state taking classes or whatever. Because you, you know, the education you need, full time army, you know, it's stream, you have to take class after class after mm -hmm. class just to keep up with the expectations of the army. He was in a southern state, and that information doesn't transfer over. Yeah, so because, because I, like, for Illinois, say for instance, you travel out of state lines, you have a concealed carry in Illinois. But it's only valid in certain states. It's only valid in like I think it's like twenty three yeah. states or something like that. So you in not every only state you got to transport it a different way. Yes. So literally, while you're driving, the legal thing to do is to carry your weapon 
how it states that you can carry your weapon in that state. Exactly. Some states have the law where, okay, we recognize Illinois, Illinois uh, concealed carry permit. But most of the states in the United States don't. So if that's the case, there is no uniformity. You might be in Tennessee for one point, and then you're technically not in Tennessee, you're in Missouri, but they are two different states. So while you may be able to legally carry in Tennessee, you might not be able to legally that's carry in Missouri. So it's like, there is no uniformity. That's how you get caught in these situations where it's like, where you were illegally carrying. And it's like, yeah, I mean, technically, yes, but like, I carry all the time. What did you want me to take my weapon off my person, put it in the glove department, pump my gas, take my gas out, uh, take the, the gas tank out, the pump out, put my weapon back on, <laughs> then start driving again. That's an entire exchange just for, you know what I'm saying, 10 minute exchange just for be knowing and being well aware of your surroundings. But on the flip side, to be safe and to cover yourself, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> just right. do it. Um, me personally, if I'm traveling and be a vehicle, I wherever I'm going, I'll look it up. Yeah. But that's the thing, like if you're say I'll, you're I'll look it up. Say you're traveling across four states, five states. Three of the four and that's what he was doing. Three of the four allow they, they vouch for they vouch for Illinois concealed carry laws. But one of them don't. So for thirty miles of that, technically speaking, if you have your weapon on concealed on you in your car, some states allow that and some states don't. So it's like there is no uniformity. It's almost designed to not not for the consumer. It's not consumer friendly at all. So I think if Illinois had the level of comfort that the southern states do, but with our same laws, we'd be just fine. Yeah. I don't you know. People would check people. People would attempt to rob. People would attempt to go. Uh, I mean, it happened, but I just feel like people would be more. People would be like, okay, Batman. Batman symbol was up in the sky. Right. You know, basically like. If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this with some caution. I'm gonna think of like three, four times before I, you know I'm gonna make this decision. Right. Because in the southern states, you know, like if I cross these two acres in the you know Johnny Boy's farm, I'm trying to get these <laughs> corn. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But you know, if I'm trying to cross over that part out, and somebody else's property, I'm gonna think twice. Cause I know he got you know a high caliber scope on his AR. He can reach out and touch me from two acres away. <laughs> Reach out That's and a problem. touch your soul. If yes. you're in Chicago and you have those same capabilities and people understand are comfortable with those, you think I'm gonna rob you at your flight? Like, there's the, in Illinois we don't we're not even allowed laser pointers. No. We're not allowed um, suppressors on our weapons. Scopes either. Right? The, uh there's certain things there's like no, a certain man, yeah, there's certain there's a certain magnification that you're allowed. So it's like certain things that you're not even allowed on your weapon, and then you go three states over to Missouri, or like stay down, this is a touch of state, but you go stay down in Missouri. And they have completely different laws, like completely different laws. So I just feel like there is no uniformity, like, you think that, so uniformity, you think, well? I think that uniformity would, would it would give us a very, very baseline, general way of knowing. Like, you can't say, oh, I didn't know the law, because everybody is held to the exact same standard. If, if you have your concealed carry, you should have known the law. Exactly. Yes. Like, you, when you sign the papers and you get your stuff, you're assumed to know, just yes. like a certain driver's license. Oh, I didn't know that I couldn't text and drive. You got your license, no. so you don't get this no. ticket. Because yeah. But, also, you, but with driving compared to concealed carry, like driving is almost, it's the same everywhere. People don't drive the same everywhere. But Speed limits are different. Yes. But the way you can carry your gun is different too. I guess. That's, that's I, almost, that's, that's the same. It's hey, almost the same. <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> I just feel like if there were some sort of uniformity, it would. Guns are bad. I don't like guns. I, I've never liked guns, but Guns don't kill people. Stupid motherfucker was gonna kill people. Exactly. So I think that I think that the biggest takeaway is that I don't think gun laws are as strict as they should be because I believe that 
there should be more of a background check. There should be more of a mental evaluation as far as who can get guns. So you think people should take like a psych test? Yeah. Before. Not before every purchase, but there should be like a biannual, but, but what if, annual. But what if somebody cool one day and they have a bad experience and they, they flip out? That's the risk that we run with still making it tougher, but just like somebody knowing, having a roll rate. Knowing we did our due diligence. That's fair. Knowing that we did our due diligence, uh, at least try to stop this from happening. That's fair. Exactly. And every every state and every territory gotta take the onus and say, I'm gonna make sure each person that has this gun is fully aware and fully capable of what they can do and what they can't do. But that's what the concealed carry class is and all of that for. If you if you do your class the way you're supposed to, mm -hmm. but you I mean Think about it. You got Joe Schmo running your class. He give you, you give him X amount of dollars and he slides you through 40 hours you knock it out. That's, that's on him then. That, 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 at that point, he's a liability. Yep, he's also and the, the state him. needs to check that. They need to get it in the I'm sure they do. Figure it out. A lot of people are slipping through cracks with these concealed carriers and they get away from work. We don't know that. With that being said, I appreciate you gentlemen for being a part of this episode. This is my unofficial, official new co-host, Juice. Well, Mark, I'm sorry. You, you're going by Mark now. Yeah, I'm going by Mark. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new me, y'all. You feel me? I'm back from a sunken place. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lex, I appreciate you, brother. Yes, Juice, appreciate you. Oh, thank you guys Mark. for uh, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. Stay tuned for oh, more content, uh, more cigars, cocktails, and conversation. Shout out to Cavassier and Rocky Potato Cigars. Catch you guys next time. Thanks.